Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today we are going to do my fellow Gemini's um, reading. Uh, and just so you know, what I've been doing lately is kind of taking a mental break. I feel like, you know, we have the full moon. Oh, I think the full moon is today or tomorrow um, in Taurus. And then it's very quickly moving into your sign. So um, one of the reasons why I felt guided to do your reading today, and that's what I was going to say, like I've been taking like this mental break and only doing a reading when I'm feeling call to a specific sign or a specific type of reading and today it's you my dear so this is going to be for Gemini sun my fellow Gemini moons Gemini rising um those intuitively guided many of you know I read through my spirit guides who then connect to your guides and by the way that's why one reading can resonate so deeply with so many it's because we are soul connected and that's how I read soul to soul. Um, definitely feel free to ask your guides for signs of confirmation, whether it be through numbers, letters, feelings, you know, trust your own intuition over anyone, even over mine, like trust your own intuition. Um, some of you could certainly be in love with the Gemini. Same thing. Do your guides know that you're here then? So, uh, just be open. That's really what I want to say is just be open to whatever wants to come out. That's how I do a reading. Whatever wants to come out, we're just going to allow it to come out. We're going to use quite a few different decks, though. We're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. We'll start with Mother Mary. Um, we're going to use the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. Um, I brought the romance angels out in case love shows itself, which I don't know if I've ever done a Gemini reading and it not show itself in some way. Um, I'm also using the major arcanas, and this is more for like bullet points, um, though I have to say they've been their own little message on top of, you know, fitting in with the regular spread, but they also carry their own message lately. And then for your main spread, I am using the Psychic Tarot. Um, you know, I let, a, I let decks really call out to me. Like, I just calm my mind, almost put myself in a state of meditation and allow, like, the sign come to me. Why? You know what I mean? Um, and then the decks, all of that. So, Psychic Tarot was calling out your name. And I'm happy because I really love that for you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. And we're going to start with Mother Mary. Get our beautiful words of wisdom. For my beautiful Geminis and those intuitively guided. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because... On my side of the family, I don't have it. There's There are no Geminis. We don't have any Geminis. But on Sam's side, both of his daughter-in-laws are Geminis. I find that interesting. I don't know why. Um, though they are very different. And, you know, that's something we got to keep in mind. Let's say you were like dating a Gemini and and they hurt and they broke your heart. Doesn't mean every Gemini is like that. Um, I feel like you know so much goes into like how we were raised. Did our parents teach us to respect women, men? You know what I mean. Okay. Well, we got a few, but we're gonna take them. Um. I never refuse Mother Mary cards unless it's like half the deck. There's quite a few, but it's not half the deck. So we're going to take it. We have quiet, quiet. This is what I do right before reading. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. Quiet prayer. 
Instead of worrying, I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. I feel like I feel like for some of you, this is about a prayer being answered. Um, and it may be like an intuitive type of, you know, it may take something or let me let me rephrase this. So I feel like for some of you, this is about a prayer that's being answered, but I feel that ultimately it is going to take your action. Um, so, you know, an answered prayer, but then the action that you need to take, which by the way, I'm not feeling anything negative. I, I feel it's, it's of the light. And then we have patience. Um, very much like temperance. I trust in divine timing. I trust in divine timing. And then last but not least, mm, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus knows what you're going through. He's been through it himself. I pray for Jesus' Jesus' help and guidance with this situation. So definitely prayer praying going on. Definitely feels like prayers are being answered. It does feel like, you know, if this is talking about like certain prayers being answered, it's in divine timing. That means it's the right time. Sometimes I may want something before it's the right time, but then is it any good? Is it ripe? You know what I mean? So I'd rather wait for divine timing. Um... Uh, definitely feels like some prayers are being answered. I feel like Jesus coming out. It's like there's nothing that you're going through that I haven't been through. And I mean that in a like a very understanding way. Okay, let's pull these to the side. Let's bring it down first of all. We're going to keep these out. Because they will, they will, we'll get more clarity. Um, even though I feel like I know exactly what it's saying, but we'll get even more clarity. All right, let's go into the major arcanas. Um, and by the way, I don't really read these as signs. I'm reading it more as energy, though I am happy to give you the sign. Hmm, we have the world. Interesting, because I just did Scorpio's reading uh, right before yours, and they also got the world as their first card. Um, and I don't normally like to say, like, oh, this sign had that also. But something made me say that. So, you know, some of you may be connected somehow, some way to Scorpio. Or you may have Scorpio in your chart. We have the Hermit. Carter Virgo. It's about your spirituality. Let's keep going. Interesting. We have justice in reverse. Um, and by the way, one of the things I do with every deck is I make sure everything is in the upright. That way, if it comes reversed, then I know it was meant to be reversed. Okay. We have the chariot. And then we have the Strength card. So we have Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra. Not really in order. All right. So Justice is in the middle of this. So some of you may be, you may be questioning whether to cut ties with someone or something. Um, strength card would say... To me, that there's there's something within yourself. You know, the strength card is ultimately finding courage within yourself. You know, finding the courage to do whatever it is you feel like you need to do. Um, it's interesting because the hermit it can it can certainly talk about you know like going through a dark night of the soul, 
Um, I feel like the hermit's energy, a lot of times, it's like we fall down to our knees, almost looking for help. Um, but I ultimately feel like the hermit figures out during this dark night of the soul that I really am the light. I really am my own savior. Um, it's about healing, healing of the past, um, healing those things within ourselves. And then this hermit is actually emerging from, let's just say, the dark night of the soul, illuminating justice in reverse. Hmm. Interesting. And then you move into the chariot, which is about unlimited potential. Um, but remember, the chariot is really moved by your seeds of intention, like your, it's like the law of attraction. You tell the chariot where to go. Um, mm, interesting. So we have this new chapter opening up, which is mirroring the strength card, which number one is an eight. But because she's wearing as like goggles, the infinity sign as above, so below, no beginning, no end. It's reminding me of Jesus again. Like, like there's nothing you cannot get through. There's nothing you cannot get through. And I feel like you must be having that realization now. You know, when I say in the hermit, what I figure out is that I like I'm seeking the light. Right. And and I do feel like, again, you know, for those who are like praying or trying to manifest something, um, I do feel like it's being heard. I do feel like you have a great opportunity of manifesting it. <laughs> um, I do feel like healing was part of this process. And um, what was I going to say? Um, so the strength card mirroring the world, a number eight, a new beginning, the world, the next chapter. And you know what I love about the world's chapter is it's a very spiritual time. Um, I feel like from this point on, like you're more comfortable with your spirituality, probably more than ever. You're trusting the signs. Um, and by the way, if, if you're unsure, like, oh, I don't know if that was a sign, ask your guides to send it again. I feel like if there's anything we need, anything that is being said so far is that our worries, our prayers, our affirmations, they're all being heard and they're all being answered, um, maybe in different ways, maybe in different timing especially with patience here, right? Trusting in divine timing. In the world, I feel like it, I want this chapter to open up. I'm ready to walk through this portal. Let's put these over here. And let's go ahead and bring in the psychic tarot now. I feel like these readings, these special readings, that's what I'm calling them because to me they are special. Um, they feel very spiritual to me. You know, all the readings have spirituality throughout the reading because that's how I read. But I, I really feel it like tenfold. So maybe it's like understanding on a spiritual level. Remember, that's what the world talks about. It's like, you know, being comfortable with my spirituality. And now, you know, it's like knowing that your guides walk side by side with you through through everything, thick and thin. We're with you. We know what you're going through. We have the death card transformation so now we have cancer leo scorpio uh cancer leo virgo libra and now scorpio so a transformation that means something's ending 
but that but that's so something new can begin. Um, interesting how I talked about Scorpio earlier, and here is Scorpio. But I feel like, you know, of course, it can mean Scorpio for some of you. <clears throat> but I also feel, even if it does mean Scorpio, I still feel it's talking about transformation. Um, getting ready to walk into this next portal. We have sacrifice. 13 down to 12. Um, another Leo energy, by the way. Sacrifice is coming under the hermit. And because we also have the strength card here. There could be something that needed to be sacrificed. Could be something within yourself, like, you know, to live the life that I want to live, then I know that it probably would serve me to eliminate this or eliminate that. Hello, love begins. Love begins. Um, you know, it's interesting because there is a rainbow behind sacrifice. There is a rainbow behind the chariot. And there is a rainbow behind love begins. It makes me feel like they're all connected. Definitely feels like there's some type of inner knowledge, inner wisdom that you've gained. And I feel like I feel like by gaining this wisdom, it makes things clearer for you. You know, this love begins as coming under justice, but justice in the reverse. Maybe I don't want to cut ties with someone. Hmm. But let's remember, because, you know, that may be for some, maybe there is someone you don't want to cut ties with. Maybe you prefer that healing take place. And if that's what you're praying for, I feel like you're also receiving like, you know, support on your end. Like, you know, what can you do? Um, and I feel like all that has to do with the strength card. But I also want to say with justice in reverse, Justice is normally about making you whole again. So with it being in reverse, it makes me wonder, do you feel whole, you know, um, with whoever, whatever you're connected to? Does it make you feel whole? Does it feel fair and just in your world or does it not? We have mental conflict. Look at this in another two, 22. Movement choices and decisions. Interesting, because I feel like some of you, this has to do with love. And, You know, you have movement choices and decisions. It's mirroring the death card. So transformation, right? I feel like there's just some hesitation here. Like there's some hesitation. Um, you could be meeting someone new. And maybe some past energy hasn't been cleared yet. And that could be what Divine Timing is talking about also. Like maybe I want this love to begin but maybe it just wasn't time yet. Maybe it just wasn't the right person. You know what I mean? Um, maybe you were in love, but maybe that's not who I was meant to spend the rest of my life with. You know, and I, I do feel like it's a personal choice. 
Um, we do have the two swords next to the Ace of Cups. Two swords is kind of like a, well, it tells you mental conflict. I feel like it's where someone's wearing a blindfold. It may just be something I don't want to face. Uh, but it definitely serves me to face it. Because I feel like as soon as I face it, then then you make this this decision, this choice. You decide what it is you want to do next. Look at this. We have the world again under the death card. Interesting. We have the hermit again under sacrifice. Uh, I'm saying it's interesting because it's following the same order. The world, the hermit, the world, the world, the hermit. The empress. Beautiful. Intuition. That's why quiet came out. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. So, this mental conflict, interestingly, three twos connected here. Two, I don't know if anybody remembers, this is an old show, Room 222. I think that was the name. Um, I watched it when I was a teenager. But it was one of my favorite shows. Um, but anyways, I find it interesting. You have two, three twos connected. So it can certainly talk about partnerships. I feel like twos can sometimes talk about love. Some of you may have a life path two or a master number 11. Um, and I say that because even with a master number, you want to add up those. Two. So master number 11, add those two ones. Um, all master numbers want to also look at the singular number. I feel like that's where the lessons lie. But anyways, I love the Empress under the Ace of Cups. I feel like this Empress is given something a good, hard look at. Let's remember the Empress is someone who is loving and nurturing, powerful, creative, um, easily receives epiphanies, ideas, signs from her guides, and trusts you. Like I feel like that was part of the Empress's journey, is really learning how to trust one's own intuition. It's also about learning through the Empress's energy not to close down my heart. That may be why I said earlier, you know, where, well, let's just put it this way. You know, sometimes we can love someone, but they don't love us in the way that, that we deserve. So we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice there. I don't feel like the Empress is like, how do I want to say this? Like, I feel like the Empress is someone, well, first of all, I feel like when she makes up her mind, she makes up her mind. And I do love that intuition is right next to her because that's what she trusts beyond all is her own intuition. So this mental conflict she would be able to break that down, look at it, and then eliminate it. And that may be why it goes in right away into movement. You know, death card is asking for movement, right? Transformation, closing of one door so another door can open. Well, this is literally like here comes that door. And then you have the world. I would not be surprised if with this love, if this is not... Two people mirroring each other in some way, um, you know, going through like having a very similar spiritual journey.
Some of you may be may uh, become single moms, but now you may be finding love. <laughs> All right, we have shadow. This is the moon. Um, card of Pisces, roller of Cancer. What I love about this image is, you know, if we remember, like even in the Hermit, that's one of the things the Hermit learns through this dark night of the soul, that I am both light and dark, right? And I feel like at least one of these hermits it feels like that's what i'm i'm that that's what i want to live in i want to live in my light and maybe i had to know that part of myself um because this is someone looking at their dark side their shadow side let's say um but i always think that's a good thing you know what I mean? Like, it, it, let's say there's any fear. This is facing it. I feel like this is facing whatever I need to face. Now, the moon can certainly stand for uncertainties. I can only see as far as the moonlight allows me to see. Um, it can also be very dreamy type energy. It is the feminine's energy. And I was going to stop there, but we got two more. We have the Ace of Wands, I'll take it. Passion ignited. Well, wow. love begins, and now passion is ignited. And then we have the Four of Swords, rest and rejuvenation. Healer. I feel like some of you, you're natural healers, and you're using it in your life now. You know, I feel like the Empress, first of all, I feel like we all carry the, male or female, we all carry the Empress's energy. And I feel like it's when we reach a certain vibration, let's say. It's when I realize that I can't let past people or events, situations that just didn't go my way, I can't let it stop me from creating a world that I really want to live in. You know, the Empress knows that she can create. Uh, she's very creative. And, um, but she's also, the one thing she's learned is how to keep her heart open. Why can she keep her heart open without fear? Because she trusts her intuition. She trusts that whatever comes towards her, very quickly she's going to know. Like, she reads energy. You know, like, before you even walk around the corner, I know if you are good for me or not. It doesn't matter how charming someone is. The Empress, you know, it, no one can really pull the, the wool over the Empress's eyes. And I feel like if you feel like you've reached that status, you should be very proud of yourself. And it almost feels like good rewards coming your way. So, this passion is going to be ignited. You know, to me, it's like there's not much I need to do. I love the Four of Swords here because I feel like whatever areas needed healing, that's what you found. And that may also be what patience is about. Trusting in divine timing. And like, you know, there may be some things I needed to look within myself. Um just to better understand myself and even looking to see like, you know, are there places where I block opportunities due to past energy? Hmm. All right. Let's see. It's on the bottom of the deck with power. This is the strength card. Again, we have triple Leo on the board. This is my son's mm -hmm. birthday. A 12. We have discontentment and boredom underneath that, the Four of Cups. So, this is probably part of what you're overcoming. Um, in the Four of Cups, I do feel like it's an emotional 
energy. Um, Four of Cups is about learning to use your spiritual discernment. That's really what the message is, like teaching you how to use your spiritual discernment. In the Four of Cups, you can't see it in this image, but normally there's a cup being handed to this person. And it does look like it's coming down from the heavens. So I feel like, you know, that means I can definitely trust this cup. This person's back is to the world, though. And I feel like that has to do, again, with the strength card. So, you know, unless you unless this is related to a Leo for you, I definitely feel like there's something within you um, that you really had to find this balance in your own life. But I like how it says power. And I often feel, you know, by looking within, really what I'm gaining is courage. So strength, courage, power. Nothing to fear here. All right. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And let's go deeper. All right. You know, I do want to remind you that when the world energy shows up, it, it's meant to be a good time in your life. Um, a time when you feel very clear about your decisions. Sun, beautiful. Another Leo. Four Leo cards on the board right now. But the sun is about illumination. It is a brand new day. And it's coming over the death card, transformation. Illumination. Um, you know, I feel like when the sun shows up, it's meant to be a playful time. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all about work in this reading. Um, sure, you have to work. And the Empress is very good at that anyway. You know, I um, often feel like a lot of Empresses have, like, healing types of businesses. You know, there's a healing modality somewhere. It, or it's just your natural energy. It doesn't mean like I do Reiki or, you know, though some of you may. Um, but it's carrying this healing energy with you and using it when, you, you know, sometimes you're using it and you don't even realize that you're helping others. Anyway, we have the Six of Pentacles over Sacrifice. We have mm, the Six of Wands over Love Begins. We have the Page of Wands over Mental Conflict. Look at this. We have the world again. Over movement, choices, and decisions. First of all, I feel like if there's a direction that you've been asking whether you should take or not, I feel like your answer or your question is being answered over and over again. Um, you know, the Page of Wands over Mental Conflict. Page of Wands is who I call my risk taker. This is someone who um, is more action oriented, you know, um, can, you know, he's looking back at the Ace of Cups. It could be someone who has taken chances in love, but in life, let's just say, and not all of them have worked out. 
Um, but the one thing the Page of Wands does, at least how I read it, is this page gets back up again. You know, it's very much like the Empress's energy. It's very, it's very hard to hold the Empress back. And who would want to? Um, but it can also talk about the younger energy of the Empress. You know, my little risk taker doesn't mean like I'm always willing to take a chance. And that's kind of what I feel like mental conflict is, is here for. It's like, oh, do I take this chance? Well, the Page of Wands would. And the, the Page of Wands is looking right back at the Six of Wands, which is about victory and success. And by the way, what I love about this image is if you just look at this person, how they're like above everyone else. And I don't mean that literally. I mean, this is someone where other people are really paying attention to them. Um, but it's because of action steps that they've taken. So I definitely see some of you like moving into like leadership type um, uh, positions or just in your own life. You know what I mean? Um, again, it feels I feel like that natural healer's energy. You know, victory and success coming over love begins. I'll take that. That's a good thing. But let's go back one. So we have another six, which is the six of pentacles coming over sacrifice. You know, this could simply just talk about like um, the six of pentacles is learning that fine art of give and take. It's, you know, giving, but also learning how to receive and knowing that both are equally important. You know what I mean? Like, if, let's say I've been in a relationship where I'm the giver and I give and I give and I give. Um, and listen, I feel like you do it out of the kindness of your heart because the Six of Pentacles is a very empathetic and compassionate soul. But yet I also, this may be part of what I had to learn. You know, do I give and don't receive? That's not a balanced life. But the sun's going to illuminate everything for you. It's like illuminating your path. I love how it's coming um, over transformation. So literally, it's telling you the sun is on the other side of that door. I close that door and boom, there's the sun. Um, it really helps illuminate your path for you. Like steps that you should take. Um, guidance. Can't believe we have the world three times. I definitely feel mirroring energy. Um, but I also feel there could be a couple different things opening up to you. All right, let's keep going. We have the Three of Pentacles coming over the world. And then, hello, Knight of Wands. So, Knight of Wands, a knight is what's coming into your world. Um, this knight, it, first of all, it can be a fast-moving knight. And it's interesting because it's coming over the Hermit, which is more slow. Well, when I say slow, uh, um... Like a met uh, methodically, I think things out. I don't know. You know what I mean? It just feels to me like where my now I might naturally take my time at something. Now this is pushing me to move sooner versus later. This means some some type of passion, something passionate is coming into your world. Well, kind of does feel like that ace. Well, you have two aces, though. You have the Ace of Cups, where it says love begins, and then you have the Ace of Wands, 
where it says Passion Ignited. And by the way, it's coming, Passion Ignited is coming right under that night. And bef before we move on, let's talk about the Three of Pentacles for a second. First of all, it's coming over a three. It's 21, but if you add that together, it'd be a three. It's really meant to be a joyous time in your life. Um, it should be like elements of celebration, I feel, are going to start happening. And it may be after a period of time. You know, I feel like... I feel like it's just just the way life is. It's like these these highs and lows, right? It's like I've went through this low. Now I'm climbing up to this high. Um, but the Three of Pentacles talks about your individuality, who you are as a person. There's no one else like you. Um, if this is talking about your creative house, then be you, do you. And it doesn't matter how many people do the same thing you do. It really does signify that no one does it quite like you. Um, not that other people are doing it wrong or right. It's just that, you know, it's trusting within yourself. Now, I also want to say, because we also have love on the board, that this is a great omen for love because this means that and because we do have mirroring energy, I feel like it's saying both people will really recognize each other's soul. You know, definitely the energy of maybe someone admiring you from afar. Maybe you're already doing something. You already have a platform and there's just someone. There's just someone. Come on, another Leo card. All right, we have the Four of Pentacles over the Empress. And then we have the Strength card again over Intuition. Okay, some of you must be connected to a Leo. I mean, Holy Leo. <laughs> so we have one... Two, three, four, four Leo cards out. I feel like there's more, but we have the King of Wands. So, can be a Leo, Sagittarius, or an, or an Aries. Um, but it doesn't have to be any of that. And then we have the Hermit again. So, between Leo, Virgo, Scorpio, who I already mentioned, um, the world multiple times it's just the synchronicities the two fours here one the four of pentacles is really about becoming grounded <clears throat> i could definitely see this being also energy of working from the home and doing very well at it again some of you it definitely feels like you do something in the healing energy in the healing business let's just say but I also feel like what this is saying is the Empress has taken the time to allow herself to heal. You know, it's like the Empress understands that we go through these cycles and let's just think of Tarot. Like when we hit a five, five speak about change. So I feel like it's a good idea, let's say at least every five years to stop, look around, what's working, what's not working. Now, we run in nine-year cycles, and we have quite a few nines here. So some of you may be ending a cycle and starting a new one, um, which would also make sense with the world being here quite a few times. But I feel like the synchronicities 
are just kind of off the chart. So it, it just makes me feel like two people who probably have similar life experiences um, and both had to like overcome maybe some difficult things, but both really um, feels very spiritual at this point. I almost feel like the emperor needs to be out, you know, with the empress. It feels like that type of energy. You know, the empress connected to the ace of cups. That's beautiful. Because the empress, she'll think about it. But I feel like if this is good love, she'll feel it. And she'd say yes to it. Again, it feels like it feels like you're gonna feel this energy before it actually arrives. It's it's kind of like that energy of like, man, I just get this feeling that something good's gonna happen. And I'll be damned, something good happens. So, Gemini, I feel like this has been a story about overcoming. <clears throat> overcoming maybe another but also overcoming like our own weaknesses and playing more to our strengths now i feel like this is about lessons that have been learned and i do mean learned um and when i say learned that means chances are you won't repeat them this definitely feels like um energy that has been lifted i'm not sure if that's the right word um you know, like, like gone from the 3D to the 4D to the 5D type of energy. Um, okay, there's a couple things I want to look at, and then I'm going to bring in the Romance Angels. I want to look at... Um, I want to look at this king. You know, this king of wands is right under the page of wands. So for some of you, you could certainly talk about someone of younger energy. Mm, eight of wands. Wow. Fast moving energy. It's also the energy of what I think about, I bring about. So I'm not feeling anything negative with this king. Maybe one of the, I guess if I was going to say scary things, would be that this energy may want to move quickly. You know, especially with the Knight of Wands and then the Ace of Wands. Before this even arise. I feel like you're in very strong energy of manifesting. Then we have the King of Pentacles. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Well, we do have a lot of Virgo on the, on the table. Um, I don't think there's Taurus or Capricorn. But now we have two kings. So let's just do one more. Hello, Ten of Cups. All right. So I feel like it doesn't matter what sign this is. Because I do feel like this is talking about the love that's coming in. So let's talk about these two kings. They could be the same person. Um, but just, you know, you're, you're seeing different sides of them. So first of all, the King of Wands would be someone who is action oriented. This is not someone I feel that would hold back like their emotions. I feel like they would tell you how they feel. Um, and not just tell you, but also show you. And I feel like that's important. And then I feel like the King of Pentacles is really representing loyalty. Uh, stability because I feel like the Empress wouldn't settle for anything less so again it can be the same person uh, male or female because remember we're both masculine and feminine energy 
But what does it ultimately result in? The Genegups, the house of love, the house of harmony, joy, laughter. And I will take that. Just trying to see if there's anything else I want to look at. Let's come up and look at, let's pick this up for a second. I feel like the hermit was meant to be there. Okay, so let's just pick this up for a second. The one I want to look at is Justice Who's in Reverse. Um, the Ace of Cups that has victory over it, and then the Empress. We have the Six of Swords. So, Six of Swords, you know, I, I feel like this has to tie back to the Strength card in some way, because... You have to go back one card when you see Six of Swords, and you have to understand what this person is leaving, and it's toxicity, whether it be, you know, a toxic person, toxic people, can't even be my own thought system. Things have been toxic to me. This is saying goodbye. This is putting them in the past. You know, Six of Swords can be temporarily difficult energy because change can be difficult. But this really is the promise of calmer waters right ahead. So, temporarily difficult, but not for long. Okay. We have the Three of Swords, and then we have the Lovers. So, your major arcana. Okay, so I, I feel like, Gemini, what you're doing is you're overcoming previous heartache. Um, you're overcoming previous toxicity. You know, probably, uh, you know, um, communication that wasn't great. I feel like you're just moving on. You're moving on. And whether it be a physical move or an energetic move, it's like a moving on. I know, I know it's time. I know it's right. And it feels like it's that action that starts to open everything up. Why? Well, because I feel like that's what the death card is calling for. That's what the world is saying. The death card is closing the old chapter and the world is about the new chapter. So I feel like the lovers is part of this new chapter. Um, and I say that because if you just look at the image, you can see the feminine's energy, right? And it's kind of like this Ace of Wands, where I feel it. I feel it. But it hasn't quite arrived yet. Same thing here. It's like I feel the masculine's energy. But he's not here in person yet. But this is the path that you're heading towards. I also find it interesting that your major arcana came out. So I, I just want to go right below that. We have the Nine of Pentacles, another Virgo card. By the way, um, it's interesting because Virgo and Gemini both share Mercury. We have the Seven of Swords, though it did show in reverse. Um, okay. 
I feel like this is what's happening here. I feel like this is, a, first of all, about old energy. Old energy that just wasn't serving me. Could have even, you know, it, it may have caused me even to, like, stop doing the things that I love to do. Um, you know, even stop you from creating your own abundance, your own independence. You know, you could have been dealing with someone who sometimes is like my way or the highway type of energy and i feel like okay well you chose the highway here um because i feel like i feel like what you're overcoming is not only a heartache but someone whose energy was just untrustworthy and i because you're moving on from that i feel like there wasn't a lot you could do to change that you know they are who they are who they are and um I feel like that's one of the reasons why the King of Pentacles came out and why I read loyalty with him, because I feel like chances are in a last relationship, you may not have had that loyalty, um, but you must have learned from it because again, moving into the Empress's energy, it's like saying, I know my worth now. And, you know, you either you either know my worth also or you don't and if you don't then i gotta go you know i could definitely see someone being like gimme 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 um but here's the thing i feel like after the change when I say no more, then I feel like everything starts to change for you in a very good way. Your energy energy starts to change. You start to feel a little better. Um, the sun comes out. You know, it's like, okay, maybe, just maybe, I'm going to be okay. Nine of Pentacles says, you know, if you're focusing on your career, you're going to do very well. It's success. That's what it talks about, success. But it's also independence. So I feel like that's what some of you are finding or have found. It's like your independent nature where I can stand on my own two feet. Um, you know, maybe in the past, like I stayed with someone because, you know, Maybe you're a mother and maybe you stay home with the kids and they went, uh, you know, and did their job and created their world and you didn't get to do yours. Now it feels like your turn. But I also feel like this importance to your work. So it definitely feels like the past has kind of squashed some of your opportunities, but they're back again. It does feel like the past kind of broke your heart, but the ability to heal that and to move on from that and to know that just because one person broke my heart, it doesn't mean that the next will, especially because I feel you yourself and your vibration is of a high vibration so again let's just say that someone from your past who was untrustworthy made a repeat appearance there's no way i feel like you would take them back and i'm talking about someone who really carries untrustworthy energy so that's that's what i feel like this is saying, you know, you, you moved on, you put the past in the past, you're feeling much more strong on your own two feet. I feel like that's a beautiful thing. Um, I also feel like, you know, relating to your money, it feels very, very good. You know, the Taurus's full moon is really a creative time. It's a great time. Um, to really put effort behind, you know, what it is you want to bring to the world. It's also a, a time where I feel some are going to be leaving 
like jobs that are just no longer serving them for better opportunities or to begin their own business. You know what I mean? Because I feel like you have those skills. Okay. So I get it. All right, let's pick this up. And let's go ahead and bring out um, the Romance Angels. And let's just give him some room. I want to look directly at the Ace of Cups. But I also want that Ace of Wands to be in there. Let's give him a cut. Healing family issues. That could be a lot of what that old energy was about. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Interesting. You know, that often makes me feel like, <clears throat> and I know this energy, um, you know, the person that I married way too young at 19 was or carried a lot of the energy that my father carried and not the good qualities because my father had a lot of good qualities but he also you know as a husband i would not let's just put it this way i ended up marrying someone just like him and that person cheated on me like with six months into the relationship i mean to the, to the point I even said, why did you even marry me? Anyways, express your love. Go ahead and make a romantic gesture. Okay. Forgiving and learning seems to be a big part of this. And I feel like that's that's why we keep seeing the strength card. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. So it's not only letting the past be, it's forgiving it. And even forgiving oneself. And, you know, let's say, let's say there is a parent who has affected you the way you love, you know, because of the way they chose, um, then I feel like, you know, this is, this is reflecting upon that. It's, it's the understanding of that. And, you know, in forgiving and learning, I don't feel that you need to pick a phone up and say to someone, I forgive you. It just means that you're no longer willing to carry that energy with you, right? You want, you want to be light. I don't want to carry all this heaviness of the past. I need to find a way to let it go. And I feel like that's exactly what you're doing. And then look at this. Calling in your soulmate. Calling in your soulmate. Huh. Your prayers, affirmations, and visual visualizations help bring you together. Wow. Hello, Mother Mary. Divine timing. That makes complete sense right a soulmate i had no doubt it was a soulmate um and this does feel you know as we move down here that feels like divine timing to me because i feel like the uncertainties were back here the overcoming was back here and this is about what's next right we want to start with the world right the death card transformation of closing one door the next door opens the sun is right there it's going to help illuminate your path soulmates no doubt because again it's illuminating two people's paths i feel like there's i, I you know i often feel this way 
But I feel like there's not a whole lot you need to do except have your affirmations. Know that you can manifest, you know, and calling in your soulmate. Listen, your soulmate may be different than what you expect, but probably better than. And what I mean by that is, let's say I have a habit of like dating the same, like it reminds me of my daughter. She dates the same sign over and over again, and she keeps getting the same results. And I shouldn't just say a sign, but with her, literally, it's one sign that, and I'm not even going to give the sign because I don't want them to think I'm putting them down. Um, But it just never works out. And I always say to her, Maybe you should try a different sign. (laughs) But anyways, look at you calling in your soulmate. Look at Mother Mary saying your prayers are being heard. Your affirmations are being heard. And that's all it's asking for you to do is to put those affirmations out there. You know, if you truly feel like you're ready for love, then definitely let the universe know that because I feel like they're just really in a way waiting on you. I feel like that six of swords we saw earlier was probably one of the most important cards because it really is about leaving the past and in the past some healing going on, but this healing will only help you. And you can't change everyone. You know what I mean? There may be someone that you were like hoping and wishing would change or you thought that your actions would help change him, but it didn't. You know. But at the same time, I feel like this is all moving you towards really quite a divine time. And not just love, though this does feel like a very high form of love. Let's not forget we saw the Ten of Cups. So we know the potential, right? And then if you look at the chariot, the chariot really does speak about unlimited potential. Now, it is up to us, though, right? It's the energy we put into it is what we receive back. It's like now that Six of Pentacles, right, the give and take, now that I've learned that, doesn't mean that I don't give I still give but if I'm not receiving then chances are I may be in the wrong place with the wrong person so I shouldn't have said that because I don't I don't feel that energy like that would have been old energy if anything um I just feel like these soulmates have been through it and each of them individually but each of them had to overcome their own trials and tribulations it was important you know it's probably each his soul's lesson like as a soul i feel like we come into this earth to learn um and even soulmates or even twin flames though you know we're we're connected um for eternity it doesn't mean that there's not certain lessons our soul wants to learn on our own. And that's what I feel. That's really what I'm feeling like. These like, like souls learning these earthly lessons and having these beautiful souls expansion. And it only makes sense as you expand that your world would expand. So I just want to say, Gemini, this feels like a time to trust in yourself to be proactive in what it is you want to do in the world. Um, If you're already doing something, you may find like new avenues opening up because I feel like your money looks very, very good. And the more creative you are, I feel like the more abundance or let's just say joy you're going to find or you're going to have. Um. And I do kind of feel like I'm lost doing my thing. And then somehow love walks in your door. And don't forget, you're walking into each other's lives. 
but it is passionate. We know that. Knight of Wands is telling us the Ace of Cups, or I'm sorry, the Ace of Wands, passion ignited. The Ace of Cups, love begins for the Empress with calling in your soulmate right over it. So it's like, I don't know what else to say other than trust this beautiful spiritual journey you've been on because I feel like you're about to like witness life at its very best really like i feel like this is one of those times where you're going to look back and you're going to call this a pinnacle of your life like this is when change really started to happen for me doesn't mean you can't already be like working and creating i just feel like the energy is just going to support you even more And then as it relates to love, I would just say, try to be open to it, you know, be open to it. But calling in your soulmate tells me that, you know, chances are this is the energy you this, this, these are the affirmations you've already been putting out there. So your prayers are being heard, your prayers are being answered, and it's all in divine timing. That's what this feels like, divine timing. So, Gemini, call in that soulmate. Put energy into your into your creative avenues. And I just feel like watch your life blossom. Don't forget, you know, I feel like the one thing you want to remember in a tarot reading, this is why my readings are long, is because... If, you know, if we don't look at the energy that it's time for it to go, then we carry that along. Or in a way, are we not telling the universe I'm not ready yet? Um, I don't know why I'm bringing this up at this point. Because honestly, I feel like, oh, I know what I was going to say. You know, you want to know, like, how can I get to my ultimate? How can I get to the Ten of Cups? You know, it's a journey. It's a journey. And a lot of it has to do with the seeds that you plant. But this just feels like natural love, to be honest with you. It just feels like it's just going to be love. And that's that. I feel both are going to be grounded. Both are going to be loyal. Both are going to be loving. I think I feel like both carry compassion and empathy within their souls. Doesn't mean I've always been like this great person. But now I really am, you know, I'm understanding who I am. My importance on the, you know, in this world. And then just let the rest flow to you. You know what I mean? Or another way of saying that is just take the action steps that are guided to you. The intuition is right next to the empress. And I feel like there is no one who listens to her, in her intuition more than the empress. So I feel like it's going to be very clear. You're going to be guided and... Just take those action steps. And don't forget, you can always say yay or nay. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel like this is there's a lot of passion here. There's passion here. There's love here. I'm not sure why I would say no. The sun is out. Should be playful. Should be a lot of fun. Probably romantic. Probably going to bring that inner child back out in you and I feel like that's a good thing remember in the lovers we saw the feminine in the current energy and the masculine not there yet well here the masculine is now here all right I'm gonna let that be um your readings never disappoint they never disappoint. And I have to say, 
you're one of those signs where I feel like I could just go on and on and on. Like, I feel like I could do another reading on top of this reading. Um, but then that would make it way too long. Anyways, I, um, I really loved it. I do understand where you've been. You know, I know it hasn't been easy. But this is really showing you, like, how you can really live life according to your terms. You know. Don't close yourself down. Lift yourself up, if anything. All right, guys, I'm going to leave that there. I love you. I thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Oh, by the way, I um, still have that promotion going on for personal readings. And <clears throat> what is today? Friday. So I'll probably end it like midweek next week somewhere around there um but anyways just want to let you know that i love you i thank you i will see you next time at our table bye bye